Um, should we start? Should we start, Maria and Kieran? Okay. Welcome to episode 107. Um, we open uh, in a uh, ND space in a ship's hold. It's night, somewhere unknown. Water drips on rusting metal, echoes in a dark, confined space. Water drizzles on sleeping Helena's forehead. She stirs awake as if drowning in a nightmare. Tomas dips a sponge in a water basin, wipes Helena's brow. Tomas. Easy, easy, my girl, easy. Off Helena's slowly focusing eyes, we cut to Beth's townhouse, the kitchen. Sarah holds Beth's cell to her ear, paces in front of Beth's laptop. It's on the counter, open to Cosima on Skype. Olivia, uh, Olivier called Paul in hours ago and he's not picking up. That's well, not out of the ordinary, is it? Well, how should I know? There's nothing ordinary about this. It's the new normal, Sarah. Paul's a monitor. He reports to Olivier, his handler. As long as Paul's on our side, we can finally start to get some answers. If, if he's on our side. That's my point. For all I know, he's selling us out right now. Interior Neolution Olivier's office. Paul's in the hot seat, a fancy but uncomfortable chair. He's keeping his shit very tight, but he's unnerved. By creepy stuff in this, uh, by creepy stuff in this creepy room, displays of rogue taxidermy animals, a cat with eight legs, a bat wing rat, a dog with a beak. Muted music can be heard thumping through the ceiling above. Paul's also being recorded. A camera's pointed at him, his image repeated on its small screen. Olivier settles back before him, crosses his legs fastidiously. This is his lair. Two monitors reveal multiple security camera angles of the club. There's a fat file in Olivier's hands. We see its contents, but Paul doesn't. Meticulous records, Paul's reports, medical tests, photographs of Beth, the last two years of his and Beth's relationship, even photos of a teen and child Beth. Let's go back eight months. Yeah, we, we already did, Olivier. When you first stated she doesn't seem to be herself. Yeah, she began abusing prescription drugs. Why, why, why are you taking this? At the time that you felt this, was there a typical response to the stresses of police work? Did you, did you view it any differently in hindsight? <sighs> no, her decline led directly to her civilian shooting. She only got worse from that. This through your lens as a former soldier and private contractor, your own experience with PTSD. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, my own observations of PTSD. I, I never suffered it myself. No? Wow. Quite the rock, aren't you, Paul? If you told me what this was about, perhaps I could help you. Perhaps you are helping me. Shall we continue? Uh, best townhouse kitchen. Sarah throws on her leather jacket, gets ready to go. Stop. Still on, still on Skype with Cosima. Don't do it, Cos. Stay away from Delphine. If we're going to get beyond our monitors, we have to engage. Look where that got me. Uh, into bed with him? Okay, L then look where it got Allison. She smoked her husband with a golf club on a hunch that he was her monitor. And now she's away at a couple's retreat trying to repair her marriage. Okay. Right, right. Well, obviously, I'll approach Delphine more logically. No, you won't. <sighs> My situation is different than yours. Right, because you're such a brilliant scientist. Oh no, I went to the wrong episode. 
Thomas said I'm one of six. Such a brilliant scientist. Because she doesn't know, I know. I'm the one monitoring her. Just stay away from her until I find out if Paul, Paul sold me down the river. Please. Cassina's not happy, but the heated conversation seems over. She lights her joint and blows a big cloud of smoke. <laughs> Whatever. You got anything else we need to be paranoid about? God, I hope not. Uh, Tomas helps Helena sit up. He helps her with a cup to her lips. Drink. She gulps, so thirsty. Now we see the space. She's on a cot against a metal wall. Dirty, rust, oily, iron beams, low ceilings. A hanging bulb lights the barren room. Bleak, lonely. I see the... Helena, why did you let the imposter live? Helena stops drinking, reluctant to say. She's different than the others. But how could it be different? I don't know. We have a connection. But it's nothing like one of your fingernail clippings, like the rest of them. She said, I am not the original, that we are all the same. Tomas smiles benign, then suddenly smacks the cup out of the It's like a slap, but expected, normalized abuse. How could you believe such a thing? He brushes wet hair from her face. Forgive me, Tomas. And that is the end of the teaser. Ooh. Tease, tease. Yeah. Mm. I feel very teased. Yeah. The opening, 107. <laughs> it's good to see Helena again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great, Helena made a sign. Oh, oh let's see Helena's <laughs> sign. <laughs> 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 Please, Harold. Yes, please share your pictures of Helena if you have them. Oh, yeah, we got them. Okay. You can tell Helena's coming because you start to like chew your cheek. Someone do the, <laughs> someone has to do the, uh, do this, do the score. Someone has to do the, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> we, should had, we should have had Trevor Yule on this call. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just to fill in some score there. Yeah. Um, Okay, here we go. Uh, act one. <clears throat> Exterior, Neolution, night. Industrial wasteland, city in the background, very little here but darkened buildings and a scattering of parked cars, including the Jag, Sarah, and Felix inside. Paul uh, was supposed to meet Olivier at, at an underground club he owns, and there's Paul's car, so. There was a club out here. Don't you think I know about it? Julie shagging before he left. What? Just remind him who's boss, you know? <laughs> oh, cross Paul, maybe you can use a magic funny on him. What a bloody mess. Even if he's not in there writing me out, the medical test could prove that I'm not Beth. Well, Cosima said they wouldn't. She's blinded by science. Maybe. But from what I got online, she's right. You and Beth are clones. So you and Beth have identical DNA. Interior, police precinct, boardroom, night. Identical. Art and DeAngelis face Beckwith, perplexed. She has crime scene photographs and a report to back up her findings. Yeah, the DNA samples from our Jane Doe and the gravel crusher and the killer in the bathroom, a match. Same person. That doesn't make any sense. Hardcastle leans up against the Jane Doe evidence wall. Waits to see who to ream out. Unless there's a screw up. Someone messed up in the lab, contaminated or mislabeled the samples. Not on my watch. Then what, Janice? He shows crime scene photos, Jane Doe's body parts. I took Jane Doe DNA from a femur. Our suspect killer's DNA came from blood we found in the bathroom. So maybe the killer planted Jane Doe's blood there. More games? So she carries around a couple pints of Jane Doe's blood and splashes it around? That's more likely than she walked into my lab and tampered with the samples. Unless someone with access tampered. Art doesn't appreciate her drift, neither does Hart Castle. Are you trying to turn my ulcer into a heart attack? D'Angelo shrugs, Beckwith shrugs, Art shakes his head. Look, we're missing something, okay? From the very beginning on this thing. 
Yeah, IDs. So if the high tech's broken, do it the horse and carriage way. Go back to the beginning, comb the whole shit pile again. Hardcastle nods back without the door. They leave bickering. And where's the damn uh, Jane Doe official reconstruction? It's coming. Art and Debbie Angelus are left alone, Art eyeing her. Someone with access? Beth wouldn't tamper with evidence. Well, maybe not. Okay. But you had questions about her running with the killer, didn't you? Art stands, faces the Jane Doe evidence board. Square one, like the man says. Open minds. We'll see what we find. Dismantles the board, pin by pin. Interior, best jag, night. <coughs> uh, Felix. Felix. Hang on, magic bunny. All right. Oh, Christ, Felix. Dad pulls up and dis dis disgorges some edgy cyber fashionistas. They watch them step to a discreet door, ring a bell, and enter. Oh, wow, cyber bells. That's interesting. All right, enough waiting around. He goes, he goes to get out of the car, but Felix stops her. No, no, no. You're not going in there with that recognizable mug. Besides, Clubland is my world. Felix flips a makeup bag. You bring that everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Off Felix. Interior, Neo Lucian, front hall. A vampy coat check boy in an alcove. Music thumps beyond an inner door. A buzzer sounds. A huge bouncer lets in Felix, who eyes adjust to the dim light industrial designed entryway. He smiles at the bouncer, then realizes the coat, the coat boy bears an uncanny resemblance to himself. Well, hello. But snooty coat check boys shuts him down. <laughs> the illusion is a private club. Well, I know, but you look so lonely. Not even a little. Astrid, a tall, formidably masculine but curvaceous woman, enters. Silver hair, one gray eye. Exudes fetish and severe don't fuck with me. Felix can tell she's the real gatekeeper. Oh, good. The brains. Can you tell this one that Snooty won't do? He's new. Guilty. But I've come all the way from Brixton to party at the Illusion before I die. My friends told me to mention Olivier. That seems to soften them up. Astrid smiles. Can't help but like him. You're dying, poor thing. <laughs> Inevitably, I'm afraid. Then you're not familiar with Neolutionism. Oh, there's an ism. My darling, Neolution is far more than just a club. Astrid takes Felix's arm and the bouncer opens the door to the club. Loud music hits them. Interior, Neolution, Maine. High-tech industrial, crazy light show, an energized crowd of cyberpunk, cyber goss, and rivet heads. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> rivet heads. Watch <laughs> projection screens showing biological processes, abstract surgical procedures. Felix is impressed as she leads him through to the bar. Augmentation, self-directed evolution, uh, Felix clocks a couple of leaky, silver-haired, single contact lenses, a similar look to Astrid. Well, I'm intrigued. Is everyone here a Neolutionist? In a cordoned off air area, Felix sees a tattooed practitioner, latex gloves. She pulls a branding iron out of a misty stainless steel container, liquid nitrogen. Not everyone. We've got techno-progressives, body mods, biohackers. Membership is really in the mind. Oh, yeah. The practitioner presses the sub-zero iron onto a clubber's wrist, freeze branding. Your eye, is that a permanent augmentation? It will be one day, but I have other enhancements. Mm. Well, a philosophy so physical makes for a very handsome tribe. So what about um, Olivier? Is he enhanced? <laughs> Darling, <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, we do. We have an idea. <laughs> I want to have an idea. Whose sick idea was this? Uh, <laughs> interior Neolution, Olivier's office. Club music thumps through the walls. Paul and Olivier are seated in the same chairs facing one another. Silence as Olivier scribbles notes. Paul looks tired, fed up. Uh, I've been here for hours. I, I, I should get back to her. When was the last time you and Beth were sexually intimate? Uh, yeah, th three days ago. 
Who initiated it? Mm -hmm. uh, she did. Mm. How would you characterize it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Would you describe the intercourse as intimate, aggressive, perfunctory, sensual? No, oh, I would say passionate. That's generally a cold fish. It's your, your words. So this was out of the ordinary. Uh, on the whole, yeah. <sighs> it's hard for me to help if I don't know what's going on. All of this architecture, psychological profiling, physical exams, social metrics, you must know it doesn't exist for Beth alone. I don't assume anything. Of course you do. You're trained in surveillance, intelligence, security. But the problem with clandestine ops is that the information and security rarely go hand in hand, which is why I've been told rather late that someone is killing our subjects. Interior, ship's hold, night. Helena sits on the cot, a white, bed sheet uh, a white bed sheet wrapped around her shoulders, her feet in a basin of warm water. I'm hungry, Tomas. No, not yet. He picks up a towel. Your task is more difficult since the real Beth child shot our friend Maggie Chen. They're harder to find. Helena pulls her feet out of the basin. Tomas dries them with the towel. Maybe we can use the imposter. I would like to see her again. Tomas smiles. It will say anything to justify itself. Helena knows what to do. She kneels, drops the bedsheet, exposes her etched back. I'll be strong. Tomas brandishes a razor blade. He hands it to Helena. The path to the shepherd is through the sheep. Slowly, Helena slices a new feather into her angel wings. She grimaces, revels in the pain like it's sex. Find the imposter. Bleed it for what it knows. <sighs> it. Um, interior, Neolution, Felix on the dance floor, dancing all mod like Sting and <laughs> He scans, the, he scans the crowd, haughty, aware of being checked out. Then he spots Paul, who's coming up a, a roped-off stairwell from the basement, heads towards the door. Felix follows. Um, exterior Neo Lucian, Paul exits. Felix steps out behind. Paul disappears around a corner. Felix follows. Paul steps back and slams him against the wall. Uh, oh. Why are you following me? I'm not! Twists Felix's arm, pushes him ah, the wall. Fine. I thought you wanted a blowjob. <laughs> ah, I recognize you. You are at Allison's and you're English. Well, suddenly, Sarah's there. Uh, Paul, uh, he's with me. He's my brother. Jesus Christ, Sarah. <sighs> I I'm, so I'm sorry. I was worried. What happened to you? I'm not here. Meet me at home. And don't bring him. <sighs> Exterior, lake freighter, dawn. Smoggy city in the distance, a rusted freighter dockside, a white van parked beside uh, the ship's stairs. Inside the lake freighter, on the deck, a heavy steel door cracks open. Tomas holds Helena on the threshold. She squints into the daylight. You are the original. You are the light. I am the original. I am the light. <laughs> <laughs> he steps out, swallowed by sunlight, and act one. Hey. Commercial break. Uh, guys, I told we should have peed between episodes. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. Oh, you Go now, run now. No. I will, I'm not in the next scene, just go. go. I have a jar, I have a jar. Keep Keep going going jar. <laughs> Christian, pee quick, Christian, pee. I'm gonna do it so you don't hear it. The rest of in your cat. Leave the door open. What if we wanna hear it, Christian? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's read it really fast so that he stresses out. Make sure you have a healthy stream. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Dylan, I like your background setup. Is that your, uh, your, your audition setup at home? Yeah, this is my garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic happens. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, where, that's where you I'm go. I'm not using my good phone. camera. I'm using my tablet right now, so I can't adjust the lighting. So I'm, but, uh, yeah, a lot of magic in, in the garage. That's this right. That's where, no. where it goes. That's where it happens. <laughs> hey, Graham, do you know what this is that I'm wearing? It's the actual one. Ah! It's the coat. If, where's the arm? It has <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the real. Guys, did the arm disappear? I'm on so <laughs> You're getting too buff, but you can't even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so so <laughs> Jordan, do you have do you have the do you have the original kimono too? <sighs> no, uh, wouldn't that be great? That would be amazing. It would really. Yeah. Be. I don't know who has that now, but they're enjoying it. Whoever it is. <laughs> <laughs> that auction. Bubba, the guy who played Teddy, he's got it. <laughs> 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 Are we waiting for Christmas? Okay. So we can oh, he's back. Let's, Let's do it. Do it. Wow. I highly recommend, I highly recommend peeing. Do you feel better, Christian? I feel great, guys. Okay. You look great. great. You look okay, so, let's, uh, so shall we continue with Act 2? Yes. Yeah. All right, excellent. Uh, Act 2. Interior, townhouse, living room. <clears throat> Sarah digs for her keys in the container. She can't find them. She turns around, sees Paul holding them. Sarah holds her hand out, fork him over. I'm going to see my kid. Trust is stretched thin. Sarah wants to leave without giving up anything, but Paul won't let her. Those, those are Beth's keys. <sighs> Let's go over what you know again. There's nine of you. No, there's just one of me. That, just like there was one of Beth. That's, that's not what I meant. Beth figured out, yes, that there were nine so far, but I've only met Allison. Now, give me the keys. Who else knows besides your brother? Just me and Allison. Well, what about Allison's husband? They've been together since high school. He's not her monitor. We don't know that. Paul, what, what, what's going on? Is Olivier on to us or what? Olivier said someone's killing the subjects. You, you, you know anything about that? Sarah considers telling him everything, but it passes. No. Who? Um, he just said to watch Beth closely, make sure she's safe. Not aware. Aware of what? Of, of us, of me. <laughs> this is high-level shit, Sarah, an illegal human cloning trial. You think I don't know that? She holds out her hand for the keys. Well, aren't you the least bit worried someone's trying to kill you? Yes but at least it's not you. And I still need to see my kid. Paul relents, but hands her a different set of keys. Take my car, it's in the underground. Why? In case someone's tailing you all right. It's my job to keep you safe. At least let me do that. Sarah takes the keys, feels a pang of guilt. Uh, interior parking garage, best townhouse. The garage is empty, quiet. Sarah walks towards the Range Rover with Paul's paranoia ringing in her ears. Her footfalls echo. She remote unlocks it. Uh, she gets to the car, about to open the door. That feeling she's being watched whips around, but there's no one there. Sarah turns back to the car. Helena is on the other side. She holds her palms up. Yes. I'm not here to hurt you. Shit. I just want to talk. Stay away from me, Helena. Please, I have an offer for you. But we must talk and eat. <laughs> Let's have lunch. Lunch. Yeah. Let's have lunch. Yes. Um, so now we cut to a uh, diner. Uh, greasy spoon, taxi driver hangout, great pie, in a booth. Sarah can't believe she's sitting across from Helena, um, assassin black. Watches her every move, half done dishes surround her. The girl is ravenous, adds salt to a bowl of jello, weird. Heaps sugar into her coffee. Her manners are crude, talks with her mouth full. I dreamed that we were friends. Mm. We're not friends. We will be. I've been at 
Sarah palms a steak knife off the table, just in case. Don't they feed you wherever you go? You know my name. What is yours? No, this friendship isn't there yet. What are you, Russian? I grew up here in a convent in Ukraine. Ukrainian nuns. Is that who made you kill Katya Obinger and the others? No. They saved me from abandonment. <laughs> Cat wanted me to burp for Helena. <laughs> I think we nailed it. I was just waiting for that. that was great. That was yeah. a really good ADR. <laughs> Very solid. Very solid. But I want my knife back. The one you took from me. Uh, excuse me. For the burp. Right, right, the flying fish blade. You got a thing for wings, don't you? I'm supposed to kill you too, but you let me live. Yeah, call it even. We'll go our separate ways. We'll never be separate. Suddenly, Helena slides down in her chair. Under the table, she shoves her foot hard against Sarah's stomach, forcing her back against the booth. Tell me the names of the others, and I will spare you. Sarah sticks the point of the steak knife into her thigh, about to use it. Move your foot, or I'll stab you again. Helena eases back as if nothing happened, smiles again. This is a nice restaurant, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, five stars. Sarah's sarcasm goes right over Helena's head. She wipes her face with a napkin, then writes a phone number on it, stands. You have until midnight to give me names, or you die first. <laughs> How stale is that bread? <laughs> I, toasted it in the, I toasted it earlier today. <laughs> it's very dry. I'm not cutting yet. You have to keep eating. <laughs> oh, man. So I take a roll when you're eating. Whenever you're eating, I just like to not say cut. Um, if I'm pouring sugar, you're just like, leave it, leave it, leave it, just a little longer. Keep going, keep going. Helena leaves, Sarah stays. That was unreal. Looks at the scribbled handwriting, erratic, childlike. Interior precinct boardroom. Uh, simil on, uh, we are close on similar childlike drawings. Helena's artwork. The Jane Doe evidence board is being rebuilt. Gruesome image by, imp by gruesome image. The rest of the case is laid out before Art and DeAngelis, a headache on the table. Art flips through crime scene photos. DeAngelis walks in carrying an evidence box. Best paperwork. It's like a mess, like she's never done it before. Jane Doe's fingerprints results aren't even filed. I know, we ran them, no match. Yeah, 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 no, Beth checked the results, I remember. But even if there is no match, they should be here. But Art's staring at a crime scene photo, a severed hand in the gravel crusher. crusher. The man said double check everything. So let's get forensics to pull the hand and run fresh prints. So we're, uh, we're hitting the morgue? Yeah, I cool. thought you'd like that. Yeah, 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 cool. Interior, Neil Lucian, Olivier's office, curled, scaly chicken claws, magnified. Olivier looks through a huge magnifying glass, listens to Va Wagner as he works with his hands, conjoins a chicken claw on a white rabbit. More rogue taxidermy. His cell buzzes. Olivier pushes the magnifier aside, answers without checking the color ID. Hello. You have a problem. Olivier sits up, judging by his reaction, he's important. What kind of problem? I just received the results of Beth's recent medical exam. Okay. Uh, we reveal in a hotel room, Dr. Leakey is on the other end. Dark room, curtains drawn, he stares at a laptop, captivated by what he sees. She's not Beth. But all we get is the screen's reflection in glasses looks like punch cards or dna sequencing gels well which one is she if she's not beth that is not your concern <laughs> just bring her in um we go to kasima's apartment in the daytime um kasima 
<laughs> She's back. The Seema's yeah. paused, half dressed to go out, foam to her ear. Uh, yeah, and she wants your names by midnight or I'm first on the hit list. Holy shit, Sarah. Don't worry, I won't give you up. Oh, uh, maybe you should. Not, not to Helena, but to Olivier. What? You're the one who said if your blind subjects became aware, you terminate. Yeah, I'm, I'm rethinking that. Cosima searches through a messy stack of clothes on her bed, holds up dresses and skirts and blouses in the mirror. Fancy date outfits. Oh, great. She has a new hypothesis. It, well, whoever our creators are, they have a tremendous investment in us, in our conception, our whole lives. Don't you think they'd protect us from Helena? Well, they know someone's whacking us. They do? Yeah, and Paul said it's just more of the same. Observe your lab rat. Keep her stupid. Cosima sighs, puts her phone on speaker so she can finish dressing. She, she's choosing sexy, wants to look good. Okay. Well, m my end feels a little different than yours. Y you ever heard of this futurist, Dr. Aldous Leakey? No. He's a poster boy for uh, a movement called Neolution. Neolution? O Olivier owns a club called Neolution. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, Felix says they're just a bunch of body mod and biohack freaks. Olivier's supposed to have a tail. A tail? For real? That's there, what he's Rain, Paul's Range Rover. Uh, well, tail or not, they have a philosophy. Delphine took me to one of um, Leakey's and Aleutian lectures. Well, you agreed to stay away from Delphine. No, I didn't. You just told me to. Because you're so enthralled, you're going to come right out to her. Look, I'll walk the line just like she is. They've got to suspect that I'm aware. Right? I mean, I changed my PhD to evolutionary development with a focus on cloning. Okay, you're gonna end up strapped to a gurney with doctors giving you the probe. I probably already have been, haven't I? Can, can we get back to Helena? Okay, you know what, just keep me out of your end, I'll keep you out of mine, bitch. Bitch. Um, at that moment, there's a knock at Kasima's door. She's not ready. Oh, shit. But whatever, she answers the door half-dressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm early. No, I'm late. Sorry. I, I'm <laughs> kind of always late, so I'm kind of always sorry. But uh, just, just give me a... Of course. Uh, Kasima ducks off to the bathroom. Delphine's smile drops as the door closes. She studies the apartment with interest. Uh, interior, best townhouse. Freshly showered, Paul comes into the bedroom from the bathroom, pauses for the briefest of seconds, clocking something. He walks over to his dresser, pulls out a folded shirt, steps to the living room, whips out a gun from the shirt. Olivier sits on the couch. Not the least bit unnerved by the weapon pointed his way. Jesus, Olivier. <laughs> Where is she? How did you get in here? My key. Paul sees Astrid standing over by the door, arms folded, oddly ominous female muscle. We bought this place for you, remember? So it would appear not only attractive to Beth, but moderately successful. So, where is your subject? She's visiting Christine. You were supposed to keep a close eye on her. It's a girl's lunch, I couldn't force the issue. But in case uh, this person you won't identify is, is tailing our center in my car. We bought your car as well. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I have new information, Paul. Uh, Olivier nods to Astrid. She exits. Olivier sets the photo face down. Your subject isn't who we think. <laughs> He's an imposter. Well, I, I, I saw her a few hours ago. It wasn't her. Hmm. Is this a test of some kind? The person who is killing our subjects looks exactly like Beth. Oh, oh you mean like a twin? Yes, Paul. A twin. <laughs> and I do. <coughs> oh, shit. Very nice. 
it. Commercial break. You have, you have to pee. Commercial break. break. Maria, are you in? Are you in this episode, Maria? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, okay. When when do we get to see you? Pretty soon. Okay, I, I can't wait. I put my <laughs> Mrs. S's plaid shirt on just to get ready. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have your rifle. I'm afraid I don't have the rifle right with me. Listen, no one's going to believe it. It's not authentic if you don't have the rifle. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I'll get a Hurley. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> you be concerned about this? Oh, okay. All right, here we go. So uh, let's start Act 3. Yeah. Yeah. Act 3. Yeah. Act three. Interior, best townhouse, patio, <clears throat> dark, quiet, a hooded figure appears at the patio door. They bend to the lock, picking it, lock pops, door slides open. It's Helena. She pokes around, not looking for anything in particular, but curious about everything. Interior, Neo Lucian, Olivier's office. Paul's back is in the uncomfortable chair. No sign of Astrid. Olivier sits across from Paul in a wingback, smokes, ponders. Again, Paul's being recorded. Olivier stub stubs out his cigarette. You've been sharing your bed with her, where, you said earlier, she's suddenly proven a vixen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Olivier, look, um, you tell me, first you tell me that my subject has been replaced by a double. You offer me no proof. You just expect me to believe you, and now you're suggesting I'm aware of it. You're unflappable. I admire that. <laughs> oh, interior, Mrs. S. Yay. Kira plays a simple tune on the piano for Sarah beside her on the bench, but Sarah is distant, worried. Kira notices, finishes. Mom. Oh, sorry, monkey. That was, that was wonderful. Felix comes in. Well, at least you didn't get your tin ear. I never learned to play the piano. You were too bad, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Mrs. S comes down the stairs with a thick scrapbook. Your mom just didn't work at it hard enough, love. Right, move over. Let me teach you some queen. <laughs> Uncle Felix wasn't bad. He was a different kind of bad. <sighs> Sarah joins Mrs. S, her preoccupation still evident. What's all that? Mostly me, some of you. Sarah opens the scrapbook. Photographs and news clippings, England in the late 70s through mid 80s, punks, labor strife, the Falkland War, uh, the, Falk the Falklands War. Over a couple of whiskeys, Mrs. S flips through a weathered scrapbook for Sarah, a timeline be beneath her narrative. England was burning. Margaret Thatcher, the slag, firing all barrels in Ireland, the Falklands. She sacked Social Security, came after immigrants, the poor, unions. They come to a black and white photo, a Brixton row house. It's racially mixed denizens uh, gathered on the steps. What do you remember about the house in Brixton, about my people then? Not much. There was always uh, women around. Kids would come and go, wards of the state. They weren't all wards. We were a safe house, really. Some of us worked in social services, you know. We helped women and kids, refugees, deportees, radicals on the run. More photos, refugees and children. Mrs. S lingers over one, a young, proud black radical. This boy, Carlton. Carlton, yeah, I remember him. He was a fine boy, fine man. Sometimes his pipeline would bring a child in in the black, a child to hide, and you were one of those. Photo of Sarah at age six, a better snipe. Why did you have to hide me? We didn't ask what we didn't need to know. But I knew the channels to legitimize a child, so I became your guardian. A photo of Sarah with wee Felix and Mrs. S. The last I heard from Carlton, he was about to be arrested, and so he asked, well, no, he begged me to move you away, to, to hide you deeper. So I left everyone I knew, and I brought you and Felix here. Sarah suddenly feels the gravity of Mrs. S's sacrifice, starts to say something, but she has no words. 
I'll get Kira ready for bed. Mrs. S leaves her with the scrapbook and bottle. <laughs> Interior, best townhouse. Helena looks at photos on the fridge. She opens the fridge, digs inside, finds a container of Tupperware inside last night's chicken. Uh, at the morgue, gloved hands pull open a stainless steel door, dig out a Tupperware container inside a severed hand, curled fingers. Colin displays the chilled Jane Doe body parts for Art, DeAngelis, and Beckwith. You guys know you already took prints, right? Yep. We're looking at the whole chain again. Angle on Beckwith uncurls the fingers with finger screw. DeAngelis is fascinated. Uh, uh, check that shit out. Finger screw. You're in the wrong department, Angie. <laughs> you want her? DeAngelis <laughs> grins. Beckwith dabs a dead finger in ink, rolls it on paper. DeAngelis cocks her chin at Colin. Hey, you ever seen a, um, um, like a post-mortem spasm? <laughs> Creepy. You're creepy. Um, <laughs> your best townhouse. Helena pokes through the closet, smells his or her, pokes through dresser drawers. She sniffs both pillows on the bed, catches Sarah's scent, lies down on her side. Interior wine bar, mezzanine. Cosima and Delphine dine on wine, enjoying each other's company. I should have ended the relationship before I left Paris. Well, turkey, right? That's the only way to go. <laughs> Cold turkey. What is it? Oh, it means ab abruptly. Uh, yes. Yeah, he was going to follow next month, but I changed my mind. Oh, so you're the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am the cold turkey asshole. <laughs> Uh, something catches Kasima's eye. No way. Dr. Leakey below them gathers his coat from the coat check. She looks to Delphine curiously, then motions to Leakey. Delphine looks. Her face lights up. Dr. Leakey, should we, should we invite him? It's You're like single now. Oh, no. No, he's too old. But his mind is, is sexy. He's fine. Okay, I'll get him. She gets up from the table with a grin. Cosima's POV. Out of earshot, Delphine nervously slips up behind Leaky, looks up and smiles at Cosima. She taps him on the shoulder. If they're acting, they're very good. Leaky can't quite place her. She's mildly starstruck and cute. Points up to Cosima. Now he remembers, waves, and graciously accepts the invitation. Off Cosima. Okay, what's next? Inside Olivier's office at the Neo Lucian nightclub, Olivier studies Paul. Now this is a test of his loyalty. Hmm. I don't know what to say, Olivier. To, to me, she's still Beth. Regardless of what you think, I need you to bring her to me. So did this in imposter kill Beth? Yes. And she's killed other subjects. Beth's dead. Why? I can't tell you that. Who is she? All I can tell you is she comes from Europe. Yeah, where, where in Europe? Does it matter? Yeah, yeah, it's a big place. Olivier pulls out a file. Loyalty is proven in the moment, after all, and loyalty has its rewards. He opens the file for Paul to see, Paul's military records, a picture of Paul heavily armed in civilian clothing, Classified photos of carnage, dead U.S. military personnel. A blurry photo of Paul beaten and bound, forced in front of the lens. Help me make this right. Afghanistan goes away. You're free of your debt to us. You get your life back, Paul. Paul's taken aback. He can almost taste the golden carrot. Yeah, I have my phone back. Back to the wine bar. Cosima sits across from Delphine and Dr. Leakey. They huddle around an important bottle of red. Dr. Leakey is charming, gracious, likable. Yeah, I'm still working it out with my advisors, but my dissertation is about uh, epigenetic influence on clone cells. Oh, fascinating field. Mm. Are either of you familiar with our work at the Dyad Institute? Your immunology papers, yes. Mm. Then you'll be interested in this too, Delphine. 
We've created a pluripotent stem cell line from human baby teeth. Cassima sips her wine, needs it, walking close to the edge, reading reactions, but they're so good at playing their cards. You've perfected a number of uh, proprietary cloning techniques in bacteria, uh, insects, amphibians, human skin grafts. Yep, that's correct. And you're also patenting, uh, patented, pat, who, know, well, who can read? You need pat more wine? Yeah, more wine. thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you're also patenting <laughs> transgenic embryonic stem cells, right? You're, you're a science. I'm a scientist. Don't <laughs> question it. I have glasses on. Okay, you've got glasses. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. That's, really neat. That's great. Red locks. Um, yeah, I mean, we hope to uh, patent transgenic embryonic stem cells. See how that rolled off the tongue? Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> once, you know, once we get the necessary approval, <laughs> that's not public knowledge. No, but I, I did some digging, and, and then I guessed. Cassima, <laughs> she, she's very cheeky. That's why, that's why I like her. You know, I'm always looking for undiscovered wines and brilliant minds. Mm. What do you think? What do you think? Both of you. Creepy. Oh, what? <laughs> it's not creepy. What do you guys think of, both of you, of applying to the Institute? We have a number of grants and programs to fund outside studies. You're propositioning us. Well, who knows? You could be the next Watson and Crick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just a geek girl from Berkeley. Well, I can tell you have a very unique perspective, Cosima. One day, you could be on the cover of Scientific American. Scientific American doesn't put scientists on the cover. <laughs> well... Every rule needs to be broken. Uh, More wine? <laughs> um, Not creepy at all. Back to Olivier's office at Neolution. Astrid has been called in. She hands Paul his phone back, stands behind him ominously. Put it on speaker. Paul dials, puts his phone between himself and Olivier, and we intercut the next scene. Uh, Sarah and Felix uh, get ready to leave. Mrs. S presses the scrapbook into Sarah's hand. If you have to go back to go forward, I understand. But let me know. It might still be dangerous. Sarah gives Mrs. S a sudden hug. Neither of them expected that, but Mrs. S welcomes. I will keep Kira safe. Just like I kept you. One more story, Mummy. Oh, you already had your story, and now it's time for bed. Okay. Monkey, swing to Felix. All right, come on. I'm going to squeeze you to sleep. <laughs> uh, she switch, uh, Sarah steps aside and answers her phone. Hello? Hi, Beth. <clears throat> hey. Beth? Hey, what's up? Uh, mm. Not much. I just, I just need you to do something for me. Okay. On Paul, eyes locked with Olivier over the phone. He hangs on the verge of selling her out. They know, they know you're not Beth. Run. Olivier darkens <laughs> with a smile. He knew it too. In a flash, he lunges at Paul with a syringe. Paul reacts, <laughs> deflects Olivier, but Astrid comes at him from behind, stabs a syringe into Paul's neck. Together, Astrid and Olivier struggle to subdue growling Paul. Uh, takes effect uh, and does it for them. His fingers lose their grip. Paul goes slack. On Sarah, the phone goes dead. Jesus Christ. End act three. Sistering. Sistering. Sistering and centerling. Sistering and centerling. We love you, clone. We make you family. Yes. Brilliant. We sing. We don't speak, we sing. Look at Elena. 
Is that when Helene um, recorded Like a Prayer and shot her yeah. own music video? <laughs> Just <Yeah>. like a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Um, shall we move on? Yeah. Let's do it. Act four. Here we go. We're inside Paul's Range Rover. Felix and Sarah are in the Range Rover, and we're back outside Club Neolution. All right, so Big Dick Paul just proved he's down with you for real, but he also said to run. I can't just leave him free. It's probably my fault he's in there. So you're going to go to take Asima's bad advice and fess up to Olivier? I have an even worse idea. No. It's probably the worst idea I've ever had. Sarah pulls out a napkin and there's a phone number scrawled on it. Uh, we cut to Best Townhouse. Helena sits at the table, holds a fork, an empty place sitting before her. Across from her, another empty setting. In behind the setting, a photo frame of smiling Paul. Helena pretends to eat, talks like Sarah, plays house. How was your day, Paul? Yes, I also had a pleasant day. I went working and shopping. Her cell interrupts the fine dining. Pardon me, it's work. It's almost midnight. Do you have names for me? I do. Olivier. That's not the name of a sheep. A sheep? Bah. Uh, he's more important than a sheep, Helena. He's a shepherd. Helena is suddenly interested. Mm. Exterior, the illusion, back door. Sarah and Felix wait inconspicuously by the back door. I saw Paul come up from the basement, so Olivier's office must be down there. But then a pair of clubbers, drunk in love and in booze, stumble out of the door. Sarah sweeps over, catches the door before it closes. She turns to Felix, dead serious. Fee, if I'm not back in 15 minutes, call on, tell him everything. And make sure Kira is safe, yeah. She hands Felix a business card, Detective Art Bell. Felix is freaked, tries to diffuse the weight of the moment. Sarah, just don't die, right? Your first funeral was just agonizing enough. Interior Neolution basement hallway. Sarah creeps down the dimly lit hallway, spies a security camera. Sarah flips up her hood, checks doors as she goes. Empty, locked, storage. Sarah rounds a corner, makes her way to a service hallway into a dilapidated tunnel, creeps forward around another corner. Astrid comes up from behind. Unmute. What are you doing here? This is off limits. <laughs> Sarah slips her hood down. I'm here to see Olivier. And you are? Inside Neo Lucian Olivier's office, smack! Paul is slapped hard by Olivier, who finds it all so unnecessary. You know how bad this can get. I'm not working for anyone. Then why protect her? I've told you, she's a killer. Or is she that good? A knock at the door, irritating Olivier. What is it? I have a bath to see you. Paul sinks. Olivier reacts in surprise. He opens the door on Sarah. Astrid stands behind, controlling her. Sarah keeps to her native tongue. You must be Olivier. This is unexpected. Astrid hands over Helena's wing-fished blade. She was carrying this. It means something to him. He eyes Sarah over the blade. Paul, deeply disappointed, locks eyes with her. I told you to run. I don't do run. Her eyes tell him, stay with me. Leave us. Paul's Range Rover. Felix fidgets in the driver's seat. He checks the time, every passing minute, a death knell. A very harmless looking clubber walks by the car, uh, but Felix is spooked by everything and everyone. He evil eyes the benign clubber locks the doors. <laughs> Inside, inside Olivier's office, Olivier talks quietly on his cell, never taking his eyes off Sarah. She's afraid, like she's gone too deep down the rabbit hole. Call me back as soon as you can. He hangs up. Oh, these years. Never seen one of you in the flesh. You're even more beautiful in person. 
he thinks you're the killer. Me? If you've got that all wrong. I have medical evidence that proves you're not Beth. How can you tell that if we're genetically identical? I'm not a scientist. Well, you still got the wrong girl. The one killing us is Ukrainian. She's blonde. She's a religious nut. You've created a whole new brand of fratricide. You're not listening. It's not me. <sighs> Who is it? What do you people want? The future. Self-directed evolution? You want to grow a tail? That's your business. <laughs> You know about my modest enhancements? You, you, you've got a tail? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I can have a tail millions of years after we shed it reminds me of what we can achieve. Would you like to see it? God, no. <laughs> I thought I was the freak. Olivier begins unbuckling his belt. Argentinian biohack. Blood flow, nerve endings, warm to the touch. But it's merely performance art compared to you. His cell buzzes, affects the ID, disappointed. Perhaps later. He buckles up, steps away. <clears throat> this is Olivier. Uh, Dr. Leakey drops an antacid pill in a glass of water, too much wine, the price of doing business. What's so urgent? <clears throat> have her. The killer. We get her ready to travel. I'll be there in the morning. And you be careful with her. Olivier hangs up, looks over to his captives. Astrid forces the black hood over Sarah's head, binds her wrists with zip ties. Rendition. Paul looks over Olivier's shoulder to the monitor, sees Astrid, leads, uh, sees Astrid lead Sarah through a dilapidated underground tunnel. Look familiar? He dangles the fish knife in Paul's face. <laughs> Means nothing to me. If you're not working for them, then why risk your life? But Paul's attention is glued to the monitor. Astrid takes Sarah into a loading bay, sits Sarah down on a cable reel. Olivier looks back to the monitor, to Sarah. Now he understands. Oh, she's irresistible, isn't she? Paul says nothing. She's why you're doing this. As Paul eyes the monitor, a third figure enters the frame, hood up behind Astrid, raises a metal bar, hits Astrid in the back of the head. She never saw it coming. Olivier walks in front of Paul, blocks his view. If I were you in position, mm, I would fall in love with her too. Uh, Sarah, uh, Neo Lucian loading bay. Sarah, still hooded, Panic breath, ears tuned, knows that something's happening. A hand reaches for her. Helena. Sarah flinches as she touches her gently. The fabric sucks in and out over Sarah's mouth. Shh. Hello, Fred. About time. Do you want to be safe? Yes, Helena, untie me. Give me a name. I gave you Olivier. Helena touches her face over the hood, slides her hands down her throat. I want the name of a sheep, too. Helena. Squeezes her throat. Olivier's office. Olivier glares at Paul as he examines Helena's knife. I offered you a way out, and you made a fool of me. You made a fatal error, Paul. You trusted the wrong person. Olivier steps aside and Paul looks at the monitor and reacts. Olivier clocks his reaction, whips around to the monitors. Astrid lies on the floor, hooded Sarah slumped in the chair. In the Neolution loading bay, Olivier opens the door on Astrid face down on the floor, advances on Sarah who is slumped in the chair, lifeless. Fish knife in hand, Olivier slowly lifts the hood on the red eyed rim eyes of the blonde killer clone. He's baffled. Who are you? I want to see your tail. Olivier notices plastic tie cuffs on the ground, cut off. In a flash, Helena seizes Olivier's arm, twists it fiercely. He cries out in pain. Helena snatches the knife. 
So, uh, so now we're in the underground tunnels as Sarah runs down the tunnel, not sure where she's going. Helena has terrified Olivier pressed face first against the wall, knife to his throat. Uh, slowly, that's good, that's good. Olivier is dropping his pants and we see his surgically implanted tail. Thick, real skin, hairless, it quivers. Lena examines it closer, curious but disgusted. She taps it with her blade. Did you lie with the beast? She touches it with an exploratory finger, then squeezes, the knife ready in her other hand. Please, you're a miracle. Let me help you. I have a message for your master from Tomas. Paul watches on the monitors and cringes when he sees Helena slice off a wall, a distant scream. Sarah opens the door. Paul looks at her. For a guy who's rarely surprised, his expression is pure shock. Uh, I guess there's a few things I should have told you about. Uh, Felix and Paul's <laughs> Range Rover. Felix and Paul's Range Rover thumbs Art's card, checks the clock. Time's up. Sarah. He dials Art. At the precinct, uh, Art's cell vibrates, and there's no one here to answer it. Art hustles back in, chews on a burger, answers. Detective Art Bell. Hi, uh, Detective. You don't know me, but I need to talk to you about Beth Childs. Bang, bang, bang. Sarah knocks on, on the window. Paul's with her. Open the bloody door. This. Beth. What about her? Uh, sorry, wrong number. He hangs up, unlocks the door. Sarah and Paul pile in. Back on the Neo Lucian dance floor, music thumps, dancers thrash, the floor is packed wild, animal through the seething bodies. We catch glimpses of the shock of white hair. Helena sways to the music. Her eyes closed, one arm aloft, scar wings spread like a bird of prey, lost in her own mad, holy dance. In her other hand, she holds something. <laughs> <laughs> throws it to the floor and walks off through the crowd. On the, on the floor, we see Olivier's bloody severed tail. <laughs> <laughs> and act four. <laughs> that was some, somebody's demented idea, hey? Yeah, how did that, what was that scoop? What's the yeah. scoop with the, the tail there, John? I don't know that the tail was my idea. I don't know if I can <laughs> uh, did John. Not take ownership of that. It was Graham's idea. I always thought Graham was crazy. Right? <laughs> Big stir it was a lot of trouble to get it passed. It was. Really? It was, it was a really early idea. Was it, it was so phallic? Yeah. It was so phallic and gross. The most phallic. <laughs> And Tatjana, you landed it every time as you threw it over your shoulder for the last shot of the episode. Yeah. Was that? From tail before. <laughs> <laughs> guys, John and Graham, I got a question for you guys. Tail thrower. <laughs> how long in advance did you guys know what was going to, how many seasons did you guys have when we started shooting? Uh... About three episodes? Uh, yeah, about three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> really? You guys were writing as we were kind of, didn't have what? like an ending pre-thought pre before we started shooting? I think we had an idea of our season ending for sure. I think we definitely knew that. I, I think that we didn't really, it wasn't until we sort of fi figured out that we weren't going to get canceled after season one that we <laughs> actually came up. We went, actually, maybe we should make a plan here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I remember reading the Bible and you had three seasons laid out and we used all of that in like the first seven episodes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was typically the case. Yeah. You burn through a lot of story very quickly. Speaking of burning through story, do you guys want to say, do you want to put more signs up or do you want to go Let's on? Let's do it. Let's keep going. Let's do it. Black five. This is the climactic uh, finale. Ooh. Here we go. Uh, interior, Felix's loft night. Sarah sits beside Paul on Felix's bed. Felix drops two glasses of scotch on the stage. 
on the stage. Oh, right. We're on the stage. There's a weird stage in Felix's loft. I forgot. Uh, uh, so he hands him glasses of scotch. You had to give her a name? Yeah. Mine. I told her who I was. Sarah. Well, she, she has a thing for me. Paul takes her hand and holds it. There's too much passing between them for Felix, who tosses back his own drink. All right, well, three's a crowd, so I'll be getting drunk by myself at Bobby's bar. Sarah and Paul barely register him leaving. We can't go back to the townhouse. It's not safe, though. They'll be looking for us. We should... Um... Sarah places a finger over his lips. She kisses him. Tender. Genuine. Finally, their, their guards are down. No lie. Sarah eases him back on the bed. Oh. I don't remember that. Part wow. Of that. Couched it. I think we did a couch. Couch. Oh, couch. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Kasima's apartment. Kasima leans against the counter, a glass of wine in one hand, Dr. Leakey's business card in the other. Delphine fills up her wine glass. Working with Dr. Leakey could be the opportunity of a lifetime. I know. Then why are you being so coy? Asima steps over to her close. Isn't it time that we admitted what this is really about? She holds her breath. The moment of recognition is here. But then Kasima kisses her. For a moment, it lingers. Delphine pulls back in shock, a hand to her mouth. Oh, no, Delphine. I'm really sorry. Did I just make a huge mistake? No, I am... Um... I have to go. Delphine. But Delphine gather, gathers her things and leaves in the quick. She went down her wine. She pushed it too far, too fast. Um, police precinct, squad room. Uh, it's a ghost town at this time of night. There's two desk lights on, Art and DeAngelis. Art's on his way out, grabs his coat. I'm going home. You should too. I uh, miss all the fun. DeAngelis opens a new email in her inbox. Results from Central. PDF report shows two sets of fingerprints. Art. Art. You got to see this, man. Art oh, Amber yawns, not expecting much. He looks at DeAngelis' screen, just like that. Reacts like he just saw a ghost. Staring back at them, Sarah Manning's mugshot. It's a match on the Jane Doe print. Who's Sarah Manning? And why the hell does she look like Beth? Wow. Well, that is the end of the show. Because she's a clone. <laughs> she's a clone, guys. She's I never clone. found that out. This is about clones? DeAngelis <laughs> never found out that she's no, a clone. No, and I play my whole thing in just what I know. So I actually didn't know that. that was what happened. <laughs> <laughs> the show. Inga, you got to watch the show. It's really good. <laughs> a choice. It was an acting choice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I found Mrs. S's bracelet today when I was looking um, for things to show. This is her, like I got this in the very first season, and I think it's the only thing I wore it every Every time, every episode. No way. Yeah. Yay. Thanks, everybody, for doing this. Thanks, Thanks. for organizing it, Pat. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for all your donations and for watching and for supporting us all. Like, like John was saying, like, you gave us our seasons. We were able to do more than one season because of you guys. So we really love you guys, and uh, we're thinking of you a lot. Uh, anybody want to say stuff to Clone Club? Mm. Thanks, Clone Club. Keep sticking together. Keep sticking together, and it's great to, great to be touching base with all of you again. And thanks for keeping the message of the show alive, always, mm -hmm. and like more now than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the I love the Clone Club is still alive and kicking, man. Like you know, I think. Uh, we all get messages on our social media feeds that people are, are still coming to the yeah. show, still discovering it, and yeah. still loving it. And it's touching new generations of people each and every time that they go through it. So we really appreciate you guys keeping the spirit alive. And truly, we all really do love you guys. So Yeah, like getting wished happy birthday by like all yeah. over the world from people. <laughs> yeah, a lot. It really actually means a lot to us, and it's so special. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys.
It was really lovely to see all of you people on the screen today as well. It was really, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. We had a special time on the show, didn't we? We made, we made, well, I moved countries, obviously, and that was really big for me. But just for all of us, we had a special time together. And we loved going to Comic-Con and all those things. Like, we really, we yeah. hung out, we had, we made friends. It was yeah. great. Yeah, I miss Maria, it. You also had some fantastic kitchen parties, too. Those, yes. those were great. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. We'd still be doing that. <laughs> but they're in Dublin now, right? But uh, yeah, we'll get back over to you soon. Yeah. And Evelyn, so good to see you again and to, and to have you all the time coming into our, our seasons. It was always like, it was always hard to work out schedule and, and you stuck with the story and I was always super thankful of that. I'm super thankful I was a part of this show. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> I'm Definitely. so emo. I don't have words. <laughs> no. No. I don't want to leave this call. I, don't I, don't want to I never thought we'd get a chance to play these characters again, or even do those scripts. We never get to do scripts again. So yeah, yeah. yeah it really reminds. I didn't me think of you'd that. ever get a chance to play any character again. It really reminds me though of us <laughs> in the yeah. thick of it, like sitting around the big table, you know, on a lunch break. You know, we're halfway through shooting our day, and it's a read-through day, and... It's uh, four in the morning, and we're halfway <laughs> through. <laughs> really, I mean, it's really it's those memories of, of, of being with you guys on set and working in the story room and, and, uh, and just working, like, um, just the intensely close bonds that we all created over the five seasons of creating the show, and I just think you guys are the most awesome family ever. Yeah, oh, I agree. Oh, you too, man. Yeah. yeah. Also, Thanks, shout out to Tony Elliott for writing that episode. Hey, uh, absolutely. Tony Elliott. We forgot to mention Tony off the top. Yeah. Big shout out to the rest of the season one writers. Yeah. 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 What, are we, what are we reading scripts from season two, Tat? Uh, tomorrow? You guys up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can just read them all. Anytime. Yeah. I'd love that. 10 hours. Quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> 10 hours. Five days, <laughs> one seat <laughs> a day. A bunch of PP breaks. <laughs> no sorry. pee breaks. I am full piss breaks. have to go. Oh, yeah. I, I've sort of, I've really just kind of, I've locked my entire family pretty much in the attic for several weeks <laughs> now. <laughs> I have to allow them to make some noise or get on the internet. Okay. Or something. We like you. Bye. 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 I nice see you guys too, Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Love you all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Thanks for organizing, Tat. Thank you. Thank you, Plum Club. Thanks for being here. Yep. Who wants to hang up first? I know. I don't want to. You hang up. Oh, you hang up. <laughs> you hang up. Great. <laughs> oh, okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. Bye, dudes. Love you, the best. Love you all. I have the last question. Right? Stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, stay healthy, everybody. Bye, guys. You Bye. too. Love you. Bye. Love you. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.